shout out to Lothian Boutique for my hair. I'm uh, happy to say it's it's fate, not mine. And I'm also happy to report that my hair is real. Mm-hmm. I can get the sharpest of cuts at Sharp Cut Barbers located at 9, nine Brown, Brown Shop Square. Square. Steve, big up your damn self. Another big thing that people feel now get wrong as of great public concerns cockpit country yeah you've divided well oh, not fuck. divided united the nation in a sense because everyone thinks that this government is wrong for allowing nana what's it nana noranda sorry for a lot of it is misinformation mining. you know mm. and you the did an article in, in in on in glean as well or yeah man i mean did that mm. but a lot of it yeah, is misinformation because what is, what is the biggest mis- misconception and, and the misconception is that we have allowed mining in the cockpit country mm. but it's well what i read it was surrounding areas and like what's something yeah because comes? here's a joke here's the thing about it mm. everybody have a different definition as to what the cockpit country is mm. so if you go to the environmentalist them they want to put appleton in the cockpit country if you go to the Maroons, them, them things that have a cockpit country must stretch go X, Y, Z. Mm. So what the government did after about 20 odd years of everybody quarreling and cussing is that, create loopholes. No. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is what enough people feel a little bit. Well, yeah, pre my youth. <laughs> so what the government did is that they brought everybody together, including the environmentalists. Mm-hmm. Mm. I read that. And we had discussions and we look at some of the studies that were done there was a study done in 2013 by i think it was i don't remember dale weber or something like that mm. and then there was another study that looked at the other studies that was done by paris leo IE before we decided that that was 2005 so paris leo IE not even didn't know so we're going to find it and then we had a thing called partnership council where the prime minister going there with all of the civil society groups environmentalists business people jamaicans for justice the youth them and discuss say yo we want to define this thing because there was a petition we on the site we create so we need to define it and we had consultations and we come up with a border based on a scientific definition when the prime minister was awarded for announce the environmentalists them said no 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 we still think if we put more in there the prime minister stopped the announcement and contemplated what they suggested and expanded it even more Expanded so, it uh, in the, what do you mean the zones or uh, expand the protected the proposed protected area even oh, more. So yeah. right now, as we speak, ten percent of Jamaica, about ten percent, seventy four thousand hectares of land, is considered the cockpit country protected area. People don't know that mm. that are almost that are ten percent of the country that was never protected before the way it is being protected now. Mm. And are we do that? Okay. You understand? So what is the cockpit country protected here? I have a thing named the broadleaf forest. Broadleaf forest is basically the untouched forestry in the cockpit area, which have most of the flora and fauna and protected areas and the watershed included in that 74,000 hectares. Jamaica has a million hectares, you know. Mm. And we are protect 74,000 over there. So, and then you have the Blue and Janker Mountain along this, and then you have the Portland Bay protected. So Jamaica is protecting on average twice the United Nations requirement for protected areas in the country. The requirement is 15%, we are protect 30%. Mm. So, so we, are, we, we have a thing now where we have to we define it generally, but in order to define it specifically in law, you have to have a thing named truthing, which is where a man have to walk around the 74,000 acre hectares and put on some spikes with point out um with gps and them thing that we are exactly this a road in night no this a thing in night this a tree night whatever mm-hmm. so we are do that now and but the reality of it is that bauxite has always been a big money earner for the society and mm. you know part of the reason why we had to protect the cockpit country because we realized that the previous man them did start investigating at the cockpit country i look for bauxite and that's my MPMP. Yeah, oh, and no. so that's why we're saying. Yeah, that's that. not calling me. No, I just want to be clear. That's why. Right. That's, that's why we're to be clear. So that's why we say in our opposition, no mining of the cockpit country. Because mm. we know they said they must start investigate. Figure the mining. I want to come in. We do the we do the thing, and we had to actually take away some of them did supposed to get. Mm. 
and keep that in the protected area and them get another piece somewhere else. So the piece that they have now that they are thinking about mining is actually on the border of the protected area. Mm. So you have them are mine SML 160 something now, which is special mining license 160. And they want to mine SML 173, I believe. Don't quote me. No. No, of course, yeah, you're the person. <laughs> <laughs> so the issue now is that some of the persons in the area where SML 170 something is mm. want SML 170 something to be in the protected area. And they consider that to be cockpit country. Mm. So when a man say, don't mind the cockpit country, to him, that is the cockpit country. But when we say we will not allow any mine in the cockpit country protected area, we have we have seventy four thousand hectares of area that we have already protected that was never protected before, mm-hmm. and a lot of people don't understand that. Now, when you say protected areas, no, my mind says there are unprotected areas, areas no, of the cockpit country that the government has not declared it, protected. If you match it, if you look upon the maps, them what them have, mm. you have different different maps. You understand? where one set of people go all the way down to Appleton. Mm-hmm. Appleton is a industrial sugar plantation with a rum factory in it. That is, to them, is considered cockpit country area. So let me ask the question now. A, a, a protected geological sensitive area comes with it particular levels of responsibility. Mm. There's no way possible you could have a, a cane factory and the rum producing factory in a cockpit country protected area. Mm. But them feel like, say, we need to make all of this area protected, even areas so that do not have, okay. even areas that do not have the scientific definition that we used to protect the seventy-four thousand hectares. Mm-hmm. But you can't really cost people because they want to protect them communities. You have to have conversations with them, which is why I have in my conversations about the cockpit area, even though there has been a lot of abuse and somewhat when I, when I use a word but there's so a lot of things they can use acronyms. yeah <laughs> we can't as a as, a, as, a, as somebody angry. who's in the politics you can't really attack people mm-hmm. you have to listen to what people are saying i mean some of it is unfair some of it is unreasonable there's mm-hmm. a lot of lies that are being told mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but then there are a lot of people out there who have a genuine concern about it and mm-hmm. our job as a government is to have conversations with people and make them understand what is happening but you have to also think about from the other side there are about 4,000 people who benefit directly or indirectly from Naranda, including about 700 workers, five to 700 workers. If you lock down Naranda tomorrow, what happened to them 4,000 people then? What happened to the poverty rate in that region? Mm. And a lot of people now think about that. So the objective... I shut down Apple time as Iris said. <laughs> So, <laughs> so the objective, so there, so there is this thing where a lot of people, environmentalists don't want no mining any at all. So mm-hmm. no mining means that you lock down carb cement. You understand? No mining means that you lock down all of the quarry them where where make stone for build buildings. Yeah. No mining means that no more bauxite. So the thousands of people them in a Saint Elizabeth in a Clarendon in a Saint Anne who depend on bauxite for a living. Yeah. I forgot what them yard. The thing is no new mining because them don't. Yeah, but if a man, with if a man sign a contract to a man in a 2004, say I'm supposed to get X amount of backside over X amount of period of years. Mm. If you as a government just willingly get up and take with the man contract and the man take it to court, who are going to pay for it? Me, you are going to pay for it. So it's not a simple thing like no mining. You understand? Because if a man has a, a, a contract that was signed in good faith mm. that you are saying to the man, I'm going to give you 70 X amount of tons of bauxite for the next X amount of years. Mm-hmm. So you can invest in your plant and you can buy equipment and you can train workers. As a government, we can just get up tomorrow and just take with the man contract. It's like you get hired to a company and you buy new clothes and you buy new shoes and you go to school or get a certificate and you spend all the money. And when you reach a company one after about six months, the boss will point and say, well, you know, I don't think you can work here anymore and you need to go home. Where you go though? Am I an environmental issue? <laughs> no, but so so the, the argument I have is mm. that we're not disregarding people's concern about the environment. As a mm-hmm. matter of fact, this government has done more for the environment than any other government in the history of Jamaica. Plastic ban and all of them things. 
Every government would have said something. No, but no, but, but, but facts we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> facts <laughs> we're talking about. We're not in the <laughs> So is so. If you look upon the facts, you will see say we want to protect the environment because mm-hmm. if we never want to protect the environment, we don't, we don't declare seventy four thousand hectares of the country, ten percent of the country as protected up there. Mm. Zin, so what we need to do now as a government and what the prime minister always does is he listens to people. Sometimes they say, boy, I'm listening too long. <laughs> but he listen to people and he always try to reach a compromise. Because mm. you will never please everybody. That's clear. That's true. <laughs> but I guess, I mean, most people wonder, like, why? why? Because Noranda is a Jamaican-owned company, right? No. No. Well, that's mm. it because it says Noranda, Jamaica. So when I was No, but it's registered in Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah. Because it feels like <clears throat> the problem is companies come here take our natural resources, do as it what they please. But people don't understand that like when, when you're investing, a, so, so what to the 700 or the 4,000 people, or your, depends on your maths, to have jobs, yeah. who have build a house, who are sending picnic to school. Yeah. So it's very simplistic to say, oh, them just come here and take your backside. Mm-hmm. But you yeah, earn foreign exchange, if you help fix your road, if you help repair your schools. You understand? So it's all good and well for be if you try to be jingoistic and say, boy, we don't want a foreigners here. <laughs> but who are gonna invest in your country? Feel like him just mock bound. <laughs> <laughs> no man. You can't this is general. Yeah, a killer was a boss before we did start this man. <laughs> Yo, no man, you can't this is general. But uh, the point I'm making yeah. is like we have a, you have a reasonably now your reasoning, you know. You mm. can't just always be driven by emotion and illogical thinking. So you don't want a foreigners come here. That means you need to send home digital then. You need to send home lime. Oh, you don't want a foreigners. That means you need to stop import foreigner car. So all of the bends, them and the markets, them and the axe, them want to sing about. Mm-hmm. You need to send them back to a foreign. Touche. You cannot, <laughs> you can't live in an isolated world. That's a caveman mentality king. Mm. It's an interconnected world. So, so you are cost, so people depend on Twitter are cost about the environment and I use phone. And that don't understand. Then, I guess that the question is made. why we can't make these things. Why we can't have yeah, but you don't made by, but you don't by have... child labor. No, but not only that. Oh, but you know. Aluminum on the phone. <laughs> aluminum on the phone. Yeah. You understand? We had we had talk about true. cockpit country when aluminum the pan the mic. Mm. All this aluminum come about out of backside. So you have to be. So it's not a sense that because you're environmentalist, you know, for drive car, you know, for your phone. You understand? But you have to be reasonable. You don't want to mine in a Jamaica, that means you don't want a house to build a Jamaica. You want to live in a cave, or you want to import all of the aggregates them. That means you have to mine somewhere. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they would just call them out for hip- hypocrisy. Yeah, some of them then clean their environment. They just depend on Twitter just yeah, attack. We're we not really there for these people still now. <laughs> we leave that to you. <laughs> <laughs> but the point I'm making is, a lot of the times people say things and you realize, say, boy, they don't really I think about what they must say. Mm-hmm. Like a guy I say, yo, I say a tweet to the guy who say, yo, we need to we need to we need to get rid of all of the cell phone towers them in the country. And my tweet from an Android. Mm. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's the same, it's the same concept. It's the same concept. So like a lot of the times people latch on to, to philosophies and thinking and them don't think about the impact that it has on themselves. Mm. You get what I mean? And the domino effects. And the domino effect of your plan. So mm. our idea is not to say no to mining. Our, Idea is to say sustainable mining. Mm-hmm. Do not go into the cockpit country with a protected area and mine the backside. Mm. Mm. You understand? Do not go into the river, the 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 the, the, the waterways and destroy it so that we don't have no river. So even even outside of the protected area, the prime minister said I will create buffers around any features that are that are sensitive in terms of ecology and hydrology. That's how that's the extent we go. Mm. And when we did it. The environmentalists say, yeah, man, this is a good move. We still have concerns about this is a good move. But now that the people in my course, the one them who say it was a good move, them silent. Because <laughs> mm. <laughs> the people in my course. I used to come on, man, they hear terms like protected area, buffers, and to them it's like it just sounds like bullshit. To them, just them don't want no mining, none to around the cockpit area. So here's the thing. Mm. I always try to take things to this logical conclusion, you know. So I could lock down the Randa. Lock it down. I think he's saying hire those people. <laughs> <laughs> no, lock it down. Mm. Lock down the Randa tomorrow. You see the backside price drop and the whole country get nervous? Mm. Mm. Lock down the Randa. 
And one of the things that I always say to you, you know, you know, not because somebody talk loud means that them right, them right or them are the majority. Mm. One to the workers, them are around and they other and them families. Lock it down. Since as you don't want to mine, lock down the Randa because if you don't allow mining any at all, then what purpose the Randa serve you? What the, the workers them are going to do? And I'm not suggesting that the people them who are advocate don't have a reason for advocate. But you have a reason with logics. You can't just a reason. No mining whatsoever. What got to the country? We depend on mining. Sad reality, well, we but we depend on mining. Mining provides millions of US dollars in foreign exchange. People are complaining about the dollar that, slide. I was reading today that it's the Jamaican economy grew on a year year. A, a year on a year, two percent in the fourth quarter of 2018, boasted by growth in manufacturing, construction, mining, and quarrying activities. And this is the World Bank. Yeah. So, so you want to lock down mining, but you still are complaining about the dollar slide. You know, make no sense. You have to understand the interconnectedness of the economy. You, know? you are born tourism, but you still tourism are contribute the most to the foreign exchange. What? <laughs> people born tourism? I don't know them. Like, yeah. if, if people know tourism, how important it is to us. You as a politician on, on Twitter, you must hear it all. <laughs> <laughs>